and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you all, the country people of the tube. Hope you're today. Hope you're feeling grand and all the world. Hello, there, everybody. Uh, welcome to the AQ Wednesday, everybody. Uh, let's start to question one, shall we? Okay, so question one is uh, Can you explain why you can't play or teach other people's songs, uh, but others can on. But uh, but others can on YouTube. So why can't I teach other people songs on YouTube, but other people can? Uh, I don't know why that is. Um, I gave up trying to teach songs after part two of Jimi Hendrix's Voodoo Child. I I, I, I I wanted to make an entire like mini series inside the series of Jimi Hendrix about Voodoo Child because there is so much to learn about Jimmy in that one song, that under three minute song. There is so much you can learn from Jimmy in Voodoo Child's Sight Return. And I did a part two, and I'm stupid, this is my fault, but I did a part two and I uploaded it. Part one got up fine. Part two uploaded and was immediately blocked worldwide by the Hendrix estate. They said, no, can't have you sharing Jimi Hendrix's music. Thus began my... Well, I already hated the Hendrix estate. And I don't think Jimmy would be overly impressed with them either. But that was the start of it for me. That was the real start of me of like going... Right, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Then thanks very much. But... Um, and stupidly I deleted that video. That was my only... I shouldn't have deleted that video. I spent a lot of time getting the second part filmed and edited. And I deleted it out of just pure anger. You ever done that? Like where you're just like... Oh, fine then. Yeah. And you just kind of lose your mind and delete it, even though you know you shouldn't, but you do it anyway. So, but I can do it again if I ever need to, kind of thing. You know, it's not the end of the world, so to say. I can do it again, and, you know, so that's not really a problem. But I can't upload it, and the Hend Hendrix thing was the start of it. You know, but, you know, th there's a lot of people saying they can't do Jimi Hendrix stuff. You know, Norman's Rare Guitars uh, get it quite a bit with the Hendrix estate, and a lot of people get it with Jimmy's thing. But then there's other people who put up covers of, of All on the Watchtower or... or slight return and and, I, and it's like they don't get any they don't seem to get anything they just seem to get away with it yeah if i put one here's an example what was it uh, i put um actually funny enough and I, I don't want to mention the live video though recently because i kind of kind of got away with that but i didn't monetize that video the live trio gig from uh last month was it last month i don't remember anymore 2020 is just a blur uh but um People, yeah, I don't know why people are allowed to get away with it, but I can't, and some people can't. Rick Beato gets blocked on a regular basis. You know, he gets copyright flags and, and claims and all that kind of stuff. And it's just annoying because it kind of brought an end to my job for Shanty. Well, it didn't bring an end to it, but it definitely delayed it because it's like, well, I don't know how to put these things into context outside of the song they're in. You know, certain things that, um, I mean, there's certain things I can and can't do. Uh, for instance, some of the Jimi Hendrix thing, I've talked about wild tricks and techniques and stuff like that, and some John Fashanti things I've spoke about. But I want to be able to teach songs. I do want to be able to teach songs. I'd love to be able to do cover songs and perform cover songs, like, you know, do my own versions of uh, of Scar Tissue, for instance, and, and like, you know, some vision, uh, uh, versions of like, you know, say Little Wing or Boulder's Love or, you know, Man of the World by Peter Green or Oh Well. And I can't do any of these because the moment they go up, the moment YouTube's algorithm gets a whiff, I swear there's a watch list. I think there's certain channels that are on a watch list. And as soon as you post anything that resembles anything, they get you. And a good example of that was a couple of months ago when I did, when I got the ACDC flag for playing an A chord and feedback. You know, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So why can't I get away with it? I don't know. Why can other people get away with it? I don't know. It doesn't seem to make any sense, really, to be perfectly honest with you. All I know is I get angry at it. I'm really angry at it. In a way, it's been really good because it's, it's made me go, well, I've got to think about my own, do my own thing. Instead of trying to do a cover song uh, of a Chili Pepper song or a Jimmy song or a Peter Green song or a Rory Gallagher song, I've had to go, right, well, I've got to do something that I've written, I've come up with, you know what I mean? So these intro jams now that are just kind of like, you know, they're no longer, you know, how long, I, I don't know how long I've been doing intro jams for. 
But um, my final straw was with Jimi, Jimi Hendrix getting blocked, and then obviously my my John for Shanty videos, all, all my John for Shanty series has been claimed by Warner Brothers. They haven't been, although I do believe some aren't able to be viewed in certain countries. Some of my John for Shanty series, but they've all been claimed. All my Peter Green videos have been claimed. Uh, Jimi Hendrix ones have been claimed. Rory Gallag Gallagher ones have been claimed. Uh, so basically, that means like you know, I, I I basically make no money off those videos anymore. You know, it, it all all the, yeah, the the pennies that come from those videos because it is pennies. Um, you know, they all go to Warner Brothers or or whoever else. You know, the Hendrix Estate. I don't know who I don't know who owns um, Fleetwood Mac and you know Peter Green and Rory Gallagher, but um, but basically, yeah, all those videos got claimed and. Every time I try to upload one, it would just get blocked from that point on. You know, the Jimi Hendrix one, I tried to upload one under the bridge. I tried to do an up under the bridge one, and that got blocked worldwide immediately. Uh, it didn't get past, you know, it uploaded, immediately got blocked. I say Voodoo Child Part 2 got blocked. Um, I, I had to re-upload a Peter Green video because it got blocked uh, for a certain bit. It's silly. It's really stupid, and I could talk about it for hours and hours and hours, and I'll just get more and more progressively angrier because I don't like it. You know what I mean? And these people, these artists, or the record companies of these artists, need to understand that if we do not play and share their artists' music, then their music will die along with them because no one will know who they are and no one will care. The transient nature of music in this day and age has dictated that. Uh, if it's not there all the time, it goes away and people just stop looking at it. And Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy, I love you, but I don't love your estate because they're killing your legacy, mate. And, you know, Hendrix or Jimmy will go away. Roy Gallagher will go away. You know, certain Chili Pepper stuff will go away. You know, uh, Peter Green will go away eventually if they keep down this road. And then they'll be like, oh, why are we not making money? It's because you don't let anybody play the music, you morons. But the YouTube algorithm is a, is a balmy thing. I don't understand it. Uh, I've been looking at my analytics recently, and the analytics make no sense. I'm I'm pretty sure they're not relevant. Uh, not relevant. Sorry, not a good reference. Sorry to anything. They're just they're like this. I mean, I don't know if that like you know up and down like a yo-yo. You know, um, it's it's bizarre. I mean, I don't understand it. I mean, uh, the, the bots that seek out uh, copyright stuff and, and then there's people seeking out copyright stuff as well. Every day I wake up more and more. I, every day I wake up more and more in a world I don't understand. And I never understood the world anyway. I've never had a good grasp on the world because of the way I am. Um, you know, even being really young, and I never really understood the world, and never really felt like I, I, I belonged. But every every morning I wake up now, especially this year, and it just gets more and further and further away from anything. I understand it's just total confusion now, and the whole music thing as well, and and also finding out kind of like you know uh, that live music basically is gone now in the UK. I'm moving. I'm not staying in the UK. I'm, I'm actually planning to. I'm thinking of moving elsewhere because I, I, I want to play live. You know, that's that's. I, I, I love playing music live. I, I love playing music, um, else other places and stuff. But playing live and connecting with a crowd, I've always loved that, and I, I always will love that. And I, and if I can't do that here, then I will go and find a place where I can do that. You know, um, so I am thinking about moving away from the UK because I just don't feel, and I've been talking to a lot of friends, um, well, yeah, and people I know who actually, you know, they are English, but they don't live here. They live elsewhere in Europe and uh, they make a living off playing music. You know, they, they, they play ski resorts or this, that and the other, you know, and the more I think about it, the more I'm thinking, well, you know, if live music doesn't return here, the level I'm at, you know, live music will return to the UK, but on the pub scene level where I'm at, you know, the, the amateur level where I'm at, kind of like, you know, the you know, that kind of level, I don't think it'll ever return. Uh, I think, you know, COVID 19s and our amazingly god awful government have seen 
put the last nail in the coffin of live music. Um, and in all fairness, coming back, to, you know, coming back to the question off that tangent, record companies have put the far nail in, in in music. Really, they're they're killing it. They're killing music. I read a horrific statistic that after this pandemic, if this pandemic ever ends, three quarters of musicians will have quit. That's a hard pill to swallow for somebody who loves music so much. I would never quit music. I would, I'd rather be dead. And I honestly mean that because without music, I don't really see the point uh, to my existence. Uh, if I can't play guitar and I can't play music, I, I don't want to be anything. Um, and I've, I, I've felt that since I first started playing guitar because when I found the guitar, that's all I wanted. And I just didn't want to be anything. I wanted to be dead. So to take the only thing that gives me feels like you know the only take take away the only thing that gives me purpose gives gives me feeling like I have a purpose in life to to feel that 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 would go away tomorrow it makes me go right well that's that's that then you know I don't want to be uh, I know it sounds a bit over dramatic and stuff like that but I honestly mean that um, you know and that's why that's that's why I I, I work so much. You know, I don't really take days off. Um, I, I don't. I don't want to take days off. I don't want to take. I don't want to breaks from it. You know, I'd rather. I'd rather just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Anyway, but why? Yeah, why can people get away with stuff and I can't? I don't know. You know, I swear there's a watch list. Personally, I, I think it's just people. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is it makes me angry and it upsets me because I'd love to pay pay homage to my heroes. You know, like John Frusciante or you know, or Jimi Hendrix. I'd love to do their songs and just you know, be to be, um, you know, to to dedicate to them and and and, res and and show my respect for them. And and I can't because the record companies are like, no, 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 not allowed to do that. Ridiculous, greed, man. Makes me really angry. Actually, makes me really angry. I bet you can't tell. I could actually, whew, I could actually punch something. I'm not going to, but I could because I'm going to punch something. It invariably be me. Anyway, which doesn't make any sense. But anyway, uh, but yeah, how can, how can other people get away with it? And I don't, I wish I knew. I wish I knew because I, I see covers all the time of people posting Jimi Hendrix covers and Shelly Peppers covers. And the moment I do it, I did a, um, excuse me, I did a cover of Blood Sugar Sex Magic, the song by the Chili Peppers about two yeah, yeah, 2018. Yeah, two, two, about two years ago, and I uploaded it to this channel, and it blocked immediately. Nope, no ifs, no buts. That's you're not you're not allowed to see that. Yeah, I see people posting that song all the time as a cover, and I'm just like, oh, I give up, I give up. So you know, it's annoying because it start it, it hasn't well. It's it kind of stopped some of the teaching I can and cannot do because I've, I, I've in my John Fashanti series I've talked about techniques and my Jimi Hendrix one I've talked about certain techniques and Peter Green and this and the other but I want to be able to teach songs because in teaching songs I can teach you how to use these these techniques practically I mean I could do it outside of it but it's harder to do because it's not the song and you haven't got a reference point it's a lot easier to teach um, the crazy wah wah John Fashanti thing if I could play Danny California because then you've got a a direct reference to it if i'm just doing it in a jam you can go oh yeah that's that sound but it's not a true reference if you know what i mean it's i don't know maybe that's just me thinking of stupid things i don't know but um but yeah so how people can get away with it and i can't i wish i knew youtube chime in we would like to know please why some of why some people get away with it and others can't makes no sense anyway i'm going to move on from that because i'm getting really angry at it because it just annoys me because i there's so much i would like to do and can't and it really upsets me. So uh, so anyway, but yeah, I hope it's answered a question of, of some kind. I know there was a lot of tangents in there, so I do apologise for that. But yeah, so anyway, so I'm going to move on to question two now. Question two is, do you, ever, do you ever have an off day on the guitar? Yes. Yes, all the time. You know, I, I've had off weeks. I, uh, In all fairness, so every time I pick up a guitar, I think everything I play is garbage. So, you know... I, it's just low self-esteem on my part that is i just don't really feel like um but again there is a that, that it might sound negative and it, and it does well, it does of course it sounds negative but the fact that i think everything i do is garbage and rubbish but what that does on a put on the plus side of that because there is a plus side to it it's not just all negative is it pushes me to be to want to be better 
and to you know to and 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 to get better you know what i mean if i just thought oh my god that was the best thing i've ever played you know i i, I feel that like i would probably end up like you know just kind of like like not trying and i don't like the idea of that it freaks me out the fact that i would never you know not try i'd rather to really push myself and push it and push it and push it and push it and go Rawr, come on dig dig you know then just kind of go eh, i'll do you know or phone it in like yeah Oh, oh, that's amazing, or whatever, you know. I don't like that. It's like, I, I, I'd i much prefer to go, it's not good enough, you need to get better, than go, that was amazing. You know what I mean? But I don't know, that, that, that's that's the way my brain works. It's always worked that way. Like, you know, my, my shortcomings have always made, always made me strive to be better. So, like, you know, if, if I can't, if I feel I haven't expressed myself properly in an intro jam, uh, well, I say that, I never watch my videos back. I just can't look at myself. I, I you know, I, I, I hate, I hate this, but um, um, but yeah. I mean, if I ever if I ever do this thing back, I'm like, right, well, that wasn't good enough. I've got to do that again, and I've got to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Uh, a good example of this recently was the uh, <coughs> uh, the Buckethead tribute song I did about well, whenever I did the Buckethead tribute song, I pushed myself to my absolute limit to get that song <coughs> right, the guitar solo right. And I was determined to do the guitar solo in one take. The guitar solo from the get from the get go of that song is one take. I didn't stop. I was not gonna, because at one point, after about the one hundred and sixty five fifth take of the guitar solo, I was almost like, well, I'm, I'll sod it then. I, what I'll do is I'll break it down and I'll I'll cut it I'll cut it into chunks and I'll just do it into bite sized bits. And I was like, no, no, because that's easy. You've got to push it, Dave. You've got to go. And the whole song was recorded on my gorgeous Ibanez gem there. Uh, and um, <clears throat> and I was like, no, we've got to do it in one take. It's got to be one take. You've got to capture it. You've got to do it. So I was just like, you know, trying and trying and trying and trying and trying. And eventually, the one that's on the song stuck, you know, I, I still don't think it's good enough. But again, I never do. But I'm like, you know... That, that's that, that's the one, I think. I think that's the one. And it was all one take. I didn't stop. You know, there was no kind of like, you know, punch in, punch out, redo that bit, redo that bit. It was all one take. You know, fair enough. It was like, you know, it was it was literally like probably the 20th, 30th take. But I got there in the end. But I was really hard on myself with that. Like, I brutally hard on myself with that. I actually did another song as well called something. Don't remember what it's called now. But um, I did another song where I was really brutally hard on myself as well, just because I, I knew what I wanted and I know I I wasn't doing it to be kind of like self harming to myself kind of thing. I knew it because I that's that's what it required for me to get the, the performance I needed for that song. So I needed to push it and I needed to push myself really to the limit. And playing in that kind of like shred style, I don't really do that anymore. So it is do have to dig deep with that one and I, and I wanted to kind of have a nice balance of trying to keep the kind of the John Fashanti Jimi Hendrix kind of melody s thing but then have the bucket head kind of thing and then also have some crazy super fast kind of <laughs> bits and I really had to dig uh, I eventually found it like I say I mean I, and, and I was like that's the one and I felt it once I once it was there I felt that was right I like I, said, I still didn't think it was good enough but it was a feeling I had in in my you know in my being where I was like that's that's the one, Dave. Yeah, much in the same way as some other songs. Um, some other songs have come really naturally, and I haven't had to push and I haven't had to try. But there are times where you've I think you've really got to be a bit brutal to yourself to get the right performance. Um, but yeah, so anyway, but yeah, anyway, I digress again. <laughs> oh, I need to get t-shirts with Tangent Boy on. Really do. Anyway. But yeah, going back to your question, I do apologise. I'm so sorry. But yeah, off off days on guitar. Yeah, get them all the time. You know, there are days where you think you played better. I played that better yesterday. You know, I played that better a week ago. Oh, I can't I'll do this today. I could do that last week. That's just being human. Uh, I personally feel it's like you know, everyone, everybody can. You know, you can do things one day and then you can't the next. It's just that inconsistency of being a human being you know what i mean because we are in inconsistent creatures you know what i mean we can't do things the same way we always do things you know what i mean there's, there's always gonna be one day where you're not gonna be able to do something you wish you could you know and um and the guitar is no exception to that and you know it, it's just one of those things where 
you either keep at it or you put the guitar down, depending on where it gets to you. If, 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 it's, if you start to get really angry and frustrated with the guitar, that's when you put it down. If you're just kind of like, oh, I'm just having a bad day, but I just fancy a bit of a plonk around, no no kind of like pressure or anything, just, you know, mistakes and mistakes, and I can live with that. Then in which case you can still play. But if you're getting angry and wound up, then that's the time you need to stop. Uh, unless you're doing certain takes on a song and you're just like, I just want to quit. I just don't want to do this anymore. Be like, no, because I, I can feel it and it's close, but I've got to push, you know. Anyway, but uh, yeah, I mean, I do get guitar off off guitar days uh you know i don't know a guitarist who doesn't you know uh, everyone has those days where it's like oh this is garbage i play bad i sound bad i am bad i'm useless you know um but there is always tomorrow and tomorrow you might play better than you've ever played in your life or the day after that or the year after that or the month after that you never know it's it's just one of those things where you just you just got to take it for what it is and just keep pushing you know you just keep going through you know eventually you know you have you have good days but you know, it's it's like anything. Some days you can, some days you can wake up in a good mood. Some days you can wake up in a bad mood. It, like same with guitar. You know, some days you play well. Sometimes some days you don't. Some days you play okay. Some days you play really well. Some days you play absolutely garbagely. That's not even a word. But uh, I can English. Um, but yeah. So yeah, everyone has bad days. You know, um, especially on the guitar. There are days where you're just going to make mistakes all the time, and you're not going to be able to do things, or or nothing's going to inspire you, or or you're not going to be able to find anything that kind of makes you want to play. And in those days, you know, it's not something to despair over. It's just one of those days where it's like, you know, it's not today. You know, you just leave it alone and you come back to it because it's not going anywhere. This is the beautiful thing about the guitar. You know, they're always there. Um, it's one of the things I love so much about the guitar is, you know, how much of a constant it's been for me, you know, through horrible times and good times the guitar is always you know well not always but most you know most of my adult life it's it's been there and yeah i'm so grateful to it forever um anyway but yeah i do have bad days on guitar i think everyone does like i say we're inconsistent we're a human being you know we we just we don't we don't work very well uh we're not we're, we're trying to be consistent yeah you know, i just don't think it's possible for humans to be consistent creatures i think we're just going to be bouncing up and down for the for for eternity but that's okay that's yeah mistakes are okay you know to have a bad day is okay you know just don't do what i do and beat yourself up physically it's not a good idea <laughs> anyway uh so uh, yeah so i hope this question uh moving on to question three now question three is what's uh your thoughts on the classic player mexican strats and are they good for john for shanty tone yes uh i'm well, my, my, my number one guitar, my white strap. My friend, my best friend here. Uh, this is a class. I think, I think these were classed as classic players. This is a 2002 Mexican strap. And this is my, this is my, this is the guitar that I, it, I judge all of the guitars by. Um, and I always will because literally I, have, I have learned everything I know on this guitar. You know, I really have learned everything, on it, and I really love it so much. And um, like I say, it's a, it's it's a Mexican classic player uh, or something like that. It's a it's the sixties reissue. I think it, I think they were called classic player back then. I don't actually know, but I'm pretty positive on it. But uh, these things are fantastic for you know for for vintage. This is the closest guitar I've got sound wise to my sixty two. Uh, these pickups, these Tex-Mex pickups, which are my favourite pickups of all time, um, they are, they are, to me, these sound extremely close, you know, if not bob on to my 62 Strat. Um, the neck is nothing like my 62. The, no the neck is nothing like a vintage Strat. It's it's just not. It's, uh, it's a lot skinnier. It's kind of one size all the way down. It doesn't kind of like get skinnier and fatten up towards the bottom like the old Fenders do. Uh, this is just kind of like one size all the way down. But this neck is just like, is my hand shape. It's totally bizarre. I love it. Because literally, even the rolled edges are just kind of like, you know, when I put my hand around it and just make a chord, it fills my entire hand. You know, it, it, it just, every, every every part of my hand, it's like, it just, it just covers it. But these guitars are fantastic. And I used to have two. Uh, you, you, uh, you just seen, you just, I used to have a red one of these. But again, I, 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 I kind of got on with that guitar, but kind of didn't get on that guitar. Like, before I sold it, 
I sold it to help fund the 62. Uh, but um, I was using the red strat quite a lot. But um, but yeah, it's not a, it's not a guitar that I you know as much as I kind of love that guitar, it's not one of those regrets that I, I don't have it anymore. I do lo I do love that guitar still though. But uh, but yeah, but no, this classic players 60s strats, the Mexican ones. Brilliant guitars, absolute brilliant guitars. I mean, you can also get classic vibes as well. You know, the classic vibe '60s ones. I mean, that they sound the part. In all fairness, anything with single core pickups, you can get pretty much to do the John Shanty thing. You know, there's there's no real secret really to what pickups work best for John. Um, you know, if, if it's a single coil kind of strap kind of thing, then they invariably work. You know, you can you can pretty much kind of like get. Close. I mean, we're never going to get 100% because we're not John Frusciante, uh, but we can get close. We can get close. We can get a good approximation. Um, but yeah, so these things, yes, amazing guitars. I love them to bits. This is this is my this is my Desert Island guitar. This one, you know, this is this is the guitar that when I'm not here anymore, this guitar will be come with will be coming with me. Um, or is that, or is that, is that really selfish, robbing, robbing the world of such an amazing guitar? Because this is an amazing guitar. Um, you know, yeah. I'm gonna get, all, I'm getting all gushy about my guitar, but you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, so the classic player Mexican Strats go great, great for John Fashanti. They're just great all around guitars. You know what I mean? Um, I love this one so much. It's, it, we've been through hell. Me and this guitar have. We've been through God knows how many gigs, how many hours playing on this. You know, I got this new in 2004, and it is this the guitar I've owned. No, it isn't the guitar. It's it's the it's the guitar that I've played the most. Like out of all my guitars, this is the guitar I've played the most on. Um, you know, over everything, even my even like my Epiphone Les Paul, my Washburn Maverick series, my first ever guitar and stuff like that. This is the guitar I've played the most hours on and learnt the most on. Um. Yeah, it's just literally my prized possession, uh, that, that, and that's why it never goes out the house anymore in gigs because I'm too terrified of something happening to it. If something happened to this, I'd I'd be more I would be beyond mortified. Mortified would not be the word. I'd be absolutely broken. So um, so yeah, this this stays stays safe. Oh, apart from special occasions where I'll where I'll take it out. But uh, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, classic players. Quids in. Amazing guitar. Oh, like I say, and Tex Mex pickups, man. Tex Mex pickups are just fantastic for the John Pashanti thing. They really have that, you know, that classic, you know, thing. Uh, I, I've got to say, I mean, I, I know Seymour Duncan SSL one people can get them to work. I didn't personally like them at all. I found them dull and lifeless and really kind of like toneless to me. They, they, they weren't very musical. But I've never really got on with Seymour Duncan pickups, if I've been perfectly honest. I've tried a lot. And I've never really kind of got on with the sound. They just don't feel right. They sound great. Like the Hot Rails, for instance, sound great. And some of the humbuckers I've tried sound great. But they don't feel right. And and that, again, that, that's really important. Anyway, uh, but yeah, classic players, you can't go wrong. You know, Mexican guitar, the, the Mexican Fenders are amazing. I really do think they're amazing. There is one. I remember in Old Hat, just to digress again. It's, not, it's one of those days today, really. Um... Just to jump off the thing, when I was working at Old Hat, we had a white Mexican standard Strat. It was it was Arctic white, white scratch plate, white body, maple neck, and the maple neck was just white. You know, it, it was that it was that kind of unfinished maple neck, so it was like proper white. And um, I used it in a couple of videos actually. If you go back to the Old Hat videos, if you look for Old Hats erupted, I played eruption, and. Um, on that guitar and that is a guitar that i should have bought and i came back close to buying it and i could have afforded it and i didn't buy it and i was stupid and it went and that guitar was fantastic and i that, that's another guitar i miss actually but yeah missed out on as well uh but um but yeah so um yeah go for it if you if you're after that kind of thing you know and you know if you're interested if you've if you're thinking that these going to work, yes, they will, you know. And then guitars, you know, guitars are like, yeah. If you look after, if you look after your guitar, it'll look after you. But yeah. So um, and I love how off color this is now. This this used to be 
used to be uh, Olympic white. So it was like it was like snow white, and now it's kind of like well, it's yellow now. <laughs> it's really yellowed off. I love it. It's white under the scratch plate. Anyway, I could talk about this guitar for hours and stuff like that, and and that's not what we're here for. Anyway, so I hope that's your question. Yes, Mexican player strats are great. Anyway, so uh, moving on to question door, question four, final question of the day. Okay, so question four is: uh, Have you ever considered recording an instrument album? Yes, and I have a few. Um, I have a band camp and that's got quite a f uh, I don't know how many albums it's got on there but I have a band camp and that's got m some albums on it where I I've got songs like you know I've got an entire album of the Untitled although I need to update that I don't know if I no I haven't done that yet I need to update my Untitled album to get all 50 on there because I stopped doing the Untitled at 50 and started naming them so uh, I need to update that to get all 50 onto my band camp. But yeah, I mean, I've, I've got some instrumental albums. I've got some albums on there as well with me singing on it. But, you know, beware of my voice. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I do have music for sale on there, on my band camp. And uh, there is a link to it on my channel homepage in the top uh, right corner, where it links to my Instagram and all that, the, the, the socials, if you will. But yeah, I mean... I would, I would love to go, well, I would, well, I'm not going to a studio because there's no point anymore. You don't need to. But I would really like to record a instrument, like a proper instrumental album with John Joe, my drummer. And I, I would really like to get my friend Ian to mix and produce it because he's a genius when it comes down to that kind of thing. But it's all about money that I don't have to be able to do that. It's it's, it's an expensive thing to be able to do that. And I, and I just can't afford it right now to, to be able to record like a thingy album like that. And maybe one day what I'll do is I'll kind of like go through my back catalog of songs that I've written that are all on here or on my band camp and, um, and kind of pick the ones I want to do. And then kind of, you know, if I can pick 10 and re-record -re them like, you know, to, a, you know, with, with John Joe on drums and Ian mixing and recording it and, and whatnot and getting other people in to play little bits and pieces maybe and then release it as like you know a, a proper album you know not to say that anything i've released isn't proper but you know i don't know if that makes any sense but you know anyway <sighs> shut up brain stop it okay so but yeah i've considered recording instrumental um, yeah all the time i love instrumental music because I, I don't i don't really i don't like my voice so i don't like to sing so if I can do instrumental stuff, that makes me a lot happier because I don't like to sing. I feel my voice is garbage, but, you know, um, yeah, uh, for what that is. Um, but yeah, so, um, yeah, I have considered it and I have a few on my band camp. I've got, I don't, I, I forget how many are on my band camp. I, I'm going to have a look quick. Um, but yeah, so, uh, yes, I don't really know what else to say, but, um, yeah, the link for it, like I say, is on the home page of my channel in the top right corner. In kind of like that picture at the top of my channel, there's there's links to like Facebook and whatnot. There is a link there to my band camp. So, um, let's see. I, I don't. I, I really don't remember how many. I mean, I've got my For John album on there. That's an instrumental album. The one for John Fajani. So one. Two. So I've got eleven albums on my uh, my band camp. So I've got, yeah, so there's quite a lot on there, you know, so, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully going to have a new one up there soon, maybe, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see, but um, yeah, so, yeah, I like instrumental music, because I feel the guitar can sing better than I can, well, of course it can, um, and it, it I, I feel like I can, I, I can emote through the guitar and not emote very well from my voice, but again, it's because I've never really pursued... I'm one of those reluctant singers where I wanted to cover Roy Gallagher and Jimi Hendrix and no one around here wanted to do that so I uh, singing wise so I had to sing but anyway that's another story for another time anyway um, but yeah so there we go yeah uh, so if you're feeling like you want to look into some of the music I've got then uh, please go to my band camp and failing finding the link on my channel just go to Google and put Dave Simpson band camp in it'll, it'll, it'll come up it's it's, the, it's normally the top one. So, um, is there anything else I need to say? No, there isn't anything else I need to say. But like I said, I, I do tend to post my songs here as well. So, And there are, they are in a playlist on here called uh, My Songs. So, 
uh, you know, you, you can go through them as well. I think it's like a... I don't know what the mix is between instrumental and actually sung songs on there, but hmm, I don't know. But, uh, but yes, so... Um, but I'm always writing songs and coming up with new songs and you know i've got loads that i have never released uh on, on, on a hard drive i've got absolutely tons of songs i've never released and uh i think it's like something like 64 songs i've never released and i don't know if i will release them some are some are really kind of like rocky some are really bluesy some are kind of like really heavy some are really kind of you know instrumental kind of stuff uh, i've got a couple of acoustic things here and there and some weird things so, but yeah, I think it was like, I think I've got something like 60, 64, 64 sticks to my head, sticks to my head, but I don't know if it's that uh, many or it's less or whatever. I don't remember, but I've got something like that on my external hard drive that I've never released on top of the ones I've, I've got out as well. So I've got a lot of stuff, but I just don't know about some of it and I don't know if it's worth me releasing it or not. I don't know. People of the tube, let me know what you what you think. Because, like I say, there's, I've got I've got a lot of stuff. There is there is one song that I really like called uh, it's called Discontent, and um, uh, it's like I, I recorded it on a, on a double neck. It was it was actually written for a double neck guitar uh, because uh, I wanted to be able to do a guitar solo, but the riff I came up with was in open C, so I needed I needed a uh, and I, and I was just like, why is this? I need a double neck for this for this song, so I can do the rhythm part on the twelve string, and I thought that would sound really cool. And then I could do a guitar solo on the six string, but have the six string in standard and have the twelve string in open C, and that song's recording on recorded on a, a borrowed Epiphone double neck from Old Hat years and years ago. I think I, that was that's probably going back to like two thousand and thirteen, two thousand and twelve. Uh, and that, that, I really like that song. It's a really cool song. Although it goes on too long. But yes. But again, that's, that's me thinking that. Anyway, far too many songs um, that I don't know what I'm doing with. But anyway, if you, you know, if, if, if you want to hear them, let me know. And I'll, I'll release a few or here, there and everywhere. Because I mainly just release new stuff. I don't really release. I don't really go back into my old stuff. Because I always think it's garbage. But again, that's me. Uh, anyway. Um... Yeah, so uh, here we go, people of the tube. Um, I hope I've answered your questions okay. There was a lot of tangent in today, and I do apologise about that. I just cannot help myself. Uh, I need to go to rehab for my tangents. What are you in for, sir? Tangents again. Oh, put you in the uh, room. I don't know about. I was, I was going to go somewhere with that one, but I wasn't sure where. Anyway, I'm in a bit of a weird hyper mood today. I'm in a, I'm in a bit of a hyper low mood. It's bizarre. I feel like really meh. But really, hmm, bizarre. Anyway, so yeah, I hope that's questions okay. I hope you know. I hope there's been something you can kind of take away now, because I do apologise for the crazy tangents that, that happen. <laughs> I can't control. Um, fetch me my medication. Um, yeah, Sandy tangent pills. <laughs> so yeah, so anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, Q and A. If you want to submit a question for Q and A, uh, description box below has an email link uh, send me your uh, question that way uh, like I say I go through them sequentially I don't pick and choose unless I've answered it before in which case uh, depending if I've answered it before in detail I won't answer it again if that makes any sense so I uh, hope you enjoyed this video everybody and I'll see you again on Friday where we're going to do a bit of a shootout between uh, two Marshall cabs we're going to do a shootout between my JCM 900 Marshall cab and the 68 Marshall cab with the original old speakers in it because I really want to know the difference because there is a difference and I want to kind of, you know, I want your opinion, people of tube on it because I, I want to know what you're hearing because uh, it's weird. It's very interesting. So, uh, so yeah, that's Friday's vid. We're going to do a uh, comparison between the, uh, the JCM 900 cab and the 68 uh, Marshall uh, original old cab. So, uh, so yes, so uh, that's Friday's vid and I'll see you then. Uh, have a great one until then. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening, and goodbye now. See you later.